3.30. I'm on my way to the stand now. We're on one mission tonight and one mission only. And that is for a big doe. So what we've got here is we've got two big nice green fields separated by a fence line. Bedding is back that way. And they come up the hill. Usually out of this low spot down here where this big tree is. And they'll come out closer to the wood line down where this cluster of trees is. Or they come out back here in this corner and they filter this way. So southwest wind coming from down here up. So I've got my muddy sticks with me, my saddle. I'm going to work my way down and uh, try to figure something out here with this wind. Nobody's really been hunting over here, so um, my dad was over here brush hogging last night and he said there was 14 does out in this field. So we're going to try to get this set up right and try to get it done on the first sit. Alright guys, finally set up. So I mentioned that there's a field right here, nice green field that they've been feeding in. Bedding is down across this holler and up on the other side. There's a rock wall right here in front of me that funnels them around. I've got a southwest wind so it's blowing from down that way, coming up past me toward the field. So there he is. Rock wall funnels the deer around. There's a logging road right there. There's a strip of pines right here below me that they like to travel through. There's a trail coming through there. The trail splits off, goes in front of me and behind me. And I'm in a real thick strip of trees about 35 yards from the field line. So I've seen these deer. I've hunted this not this spot, but I've hunted back in the corner of our field for years, and I've seen what these deer do. So nobody's ever hunted this tree. So I'm trying to take them by surprise, because those deer, they know that we like to hunt that corner, and they know that the other person that hunts here hunts these lock-on stands right up past me. So it's like, it's automatic. They check those spots out when they come in. And what they seem to do is they'll come in and they'll hit this transition edge right here. There's kind of an open area right beside me. They'll hit that edge and then they'll stop and kind of check things out before they go out into the field. If you watched Flingin's Failures yesterday on my hunt, my vlog yesterday, you see that doe come in and blue like 46 times so it's me versus the big does I will be shooting anything without antlers tonight without prejudice there's too many does around here you know that's what I get for feeding them all year leaving them alone you know I sneak into their bedroom once, just once. I sneak into her bedroom and they freak out. I mean, you think you could get away with it just one time, but obviously not. You just try to have a good hunt and they blow and they stomp and snort and they ruin it. So tonight is payback.
Alright, so I got down and got my arrow. Arrow doesn't look good. It's got some gut stuff on it. But I'm thinking she was quartering toward me a touch. And it went in pretty tight to the shoulder. And uh, she only went 50 yards. And I thought I heard her go down. And I got down, found the blood. There's actually a decent amount of blood on the ground. There wasn't any gut material in it at all. And I found where she bedded down, and it's just full of blood, bubbly blood, like lung blood. So I packed up all my stuff and snuck out of there. So I'm gonna give her about an hour and uh, go back in there. I think she's dead already, but we'll go back here in a little bit. We'll get her. Well guys, I shot that doe last night, and uh, man, I thought I nailed her. Me and my dad went back about an hour after the shot, and I really thought she was dead, and uh, the blood was real spotty for about 80, 90 yards, and uh, I kind of lost the blood, but where she was at, up on top of this rock cliff, there's one kind of low gap in it where they go down over. So I just kind of walked right to there, and when I peeked down over, she was laying right there, and uh, she jumped up, <clears throat> crashed down over the hill. Um, she wasn't going too good, so she's hurt pretty bad, or she was hurt pretty bad. <clears throat> um, so I just backed out of there last night. It got cooler last night than it has been getting, um, cooler than it was when I shot my buck, so if I find her, I think she'll be okay. Here's that rock cliff I was talking about. So where I jumped her up is right up here. And you can see how thick this is in here. It's just nasty. But this is the logging road they use. So this logging road goes up and it wraps around. And I was hunting back up here. So that deer ran up and tried to come back down. And she was bedded right up here. So. I'm going to make my way up there and try to find blood and um, I figure she either come down and hit this logging road and went out or she's right up in here somewhere so I, uh, I went back up to that initial bed where I jumped her last night and I found blood and uh, I kind of just went down the trail that I saw her go and I found more blood and I got halfway down the trail and I found a bed with good blood in it and I think she died right there but she wasn't in it so I followed drag marks down the side of the hill and uh, I've never lost a deer to coyotes, but there's a first time for everything, and I lost this one. Ah, man, I'm bummed. So, there she is. I got her propped up there. You can see my shot right behind the shoulder. I mean, it's exactly where I was aiming, right where I thought it was. She was just quartering toward me a little bit and uh, the other side of her is just gone so I'm, I'm not going to show it to you. I mean you can see, I mean they got her shoulder ripped completely off. Well I'm glad I was able to make the recovery and you know, I feel like I did my part to put the effort in for this deer you know, that I shot. It was a good hunt last night. 
Um, man, my setup just worked perfect. Got up in a gnarly hickory tree on this funnel where they come around this rock ledge. And, uh, you know, my setup worked perfect. This was the first doe that came in and uh, stopped right in my lane at 32 yards. And you can see the entry hole right behind the shoulder. Problem was she was quartering toward me just a little more than I thought she was. I thought it was just a slight quartering angle. And uh, on the video, the camera is actually on the right side of the tree and I was swung clear off to the left. So it wasn't quite as bad <clears throat> as it looked on the video. But I shot, watched the arrow go right through her. She ran about 50 yards and I heard her fall down. I heard her go down and uh, you know I thought that was it. So I packed up my stuff and I walked over there and I found the bed and there was good, thick, bright red blood in it. You know, it looked like lung blood. And I thought, well, I probably got a single lung back through the liver. So I left for a little over an hour, came back, took up the trail, and the blood trail was really spotty. And uh, I got to the top of this cliff here and when I shone my light down over the edge, she was laying there looking at me and she jumped up and busted down through this brush. So I just, you know, made the decision to back out. Um, it was supposed to be cooler last night, so I knew she'd be okay. So I came back in here right at daylight and went back to that bed. I actually walked right by this deer. I didn't even see her laying here in the road. But I went back up and I found where she came down and I'm pretty sure she died just right up here last night. And, uh, the coyotes drug her down here in the road and took care of her, so <laughs> real bummed about that, but it's beyond my control, you know, they got to eat too, and I don't think I'd pass up a free meal either, so it's just one of them things, you know, it's hunting, it's, that's how it goes, but not a real good conclusion to this hunt, but I'm glad that I found her, so. Time to re regroup, and uh, I'll be headed to Ohio into this week to hunt some big bucks. So, I'm not gonna let it slow me down too much, but I'm glad that I was able to find her and get some closure on it. So, till next time.